Cousins, as you can see in action. Sean McMahon leading the way, their captain. Then Dermot McMahon, his cousin, is in midfield. And another cousin is on the 40, Alan Markham. And so the match is underway. It's the uh, 47th ever championship meeting of Clare and Tipperary. We may have said earlier on that it was as dull as dishwater weather-wise. Well, the sun has attempted to come out. It's brightened up considerably. No rain at this stage. And Clare are playing in this first half from left to right and that straight away in the thick of the action was Jerry Quinn over there losing his way to Owen Kelly Kelly won a, the man of the match award in the Alliance League final just 13 days ago this is Alan Markham coming on to it and I expect quite a few switches and changes here and uh, that is going to be a free out great bit of work there by it wasn't uh, or was it Alan Markham it was indeed and he has switched on to the uh, right half forward position and Tony Griffin has gone in centre and I think they have brought Tony Carmody out to left half forward and that would leave the new man Andy Quinn or Andrew Quinn at full forward up against the new full back Paul Curran of Tipperary so lots of switches by Claire and James Z by the way has gone to top of the left that's another switch so switches are plenty Alan Markham wearing the green helmet usually we can see the shaven head Trying to get away from the attentions there of Conor Gleeson. A little bit hectic earlier on. Here's Tony Griffin. Got six points from play in last year's match between the teams. Hefty late challenge there. It's going to be a free from where the ball lands, which is about 23 metres out. They don't make a, head, a lot of headway, but it's more or less in straight to the post this free and a chance for Clare to go in front. That was a challenge there by Paul Kelly right into the middle of uh, Tony Griffin. What are you expecting this afternoon, in particular from Clare, because Tip are the overwhelming favourites to win it? Yeah, Gerard, Clare are going to have to meet Tip eyeball to eyeball. They're going to have to play at high intensity, and they've won the toss, playing with the breeze, won't be up at least six or seven by half-time, Gerard, because there is a strong breeze out there. Now they've really shown the Tony breeze. Griffin in centre forward because he did have a great game against them last year, and they're just hoping for the same thing again. And young Quinn from Tulla, brother of the cornerbacks, he's in full forward, a good hurler. So that breeze behind Clare first half and uh, Jamesy pointing the free, so they take the lead. Brian O'Mara operating, wearing number 10 this afternoon, even though technically, according to the programme, he should be number 26. But they've opted to stay with the numbers in which they were selected, although the programme numbers are at variance with that. Here comes the man they call Gilly, Van Gal Gilligan, former All-Star, and that hangs inside the right-hand post. And this is a good start by the Bannermen. First chance for now Gilligan. They played against Tipperary three weeks ago in the league. And he missed an immense amount of chances. Very good start here. Referee has gone back down the field there. And he is uh, isolating a couple of players. Conor Gleeson and I think it's Sean McMahon as well. Being spoken to by referee Elgore Maxine. Man who was in charge of the... In his Soul Ireland hurling final last September. Puck out then for Brendan Cummins. Second time he's been called into action. Very experienced player, Brendan. Playing today in his 27th championship match. This is James e. O'Connor up against Martin Mahar. Whipped away. Up towards John Carroll. Very versatile player. Comes back down there to Cahill. He received a thump into the back after he hit that one away. And I just wonder what the referee is going to do. Cahill had his chance. Was there an advantage allowed? But he was certainly fouled there. That's David Hoey on the ground. There, that was where the challenge came, right in there on top of Liam Cahill. No indication yet from the referee just what uh, course of action he's going to take. Liam Cahill, former All-Star player, of course. I remember back in 1996 when he got his All-Star, he scored three goals and ten points in uh, four matches that year. Two against one there when that bro ball broke down there as far as Liam Cowell. Well, David Hoy has been uh, spoken to by the referee and he's up on his feet once again. After all of that, that's Brian Quinn. In his first campaign in the uh, Guinness Monster Hurling Championship, Tipperary manager Michael Doyle in there. Davy Fitzgerald, longer serving member of this particular Clare team, made his debut back in 1990. The referee has gone across here and he's noted that David Hoey has a sufficiently bad injury 
that he's having to leave the field. So Howie is going off, I can tell you, out of shot. And the match is under five minutes old. Injured himself in the challenge there on Liam Cowell, and Cowell appeared to be fouled, and there is a change being made by Clare, and coming into the action is Connor Plunkett. Connor has played a lot of action, a lot of matches recently in the National League. A puck out comes straight to Brian O'Mara, this year's captain. The Mullen the man, of course. Another Mullen the man is Owen Kelly. This drops short, should be easy for the goalkeeper. It lands in the ground, however, and it's very heavy, very damp. There was no bounce whatsoever there, and Davy Fitz whips it away down the field once again. The back line under pressure, Benny Dunn getting it out. Now Gilligan coming onto it, looking for something, trying to hand pass it into the clear. Griffin gets it across towards Jamesy O'Connor, one goal in his career so far, back down once again towards Griffin, looking for another goal for Clare, but he's in the small square. It doesn't count, and it's going to be a free out. Yeah, Jeremy will find as well. He hand passed the ball into the net, which you can, cannot do. If it was a let off for tip at that stage, clearly taking the game to tip. It's very lackluster. There is no movement on the ground. Here's, you can see him going through. He gets a heavy tackle, hand passed into the net. Now, clear and lucky once it's a, it's a penalty, but you can't hand pass the ball anymore for a score. So, free out after all of that. This is it again here. James, he might have had the chance, but uh, the defenders were closing him down quickly. He laid it off to Griffin, and as you say, hand-passed it in, and that's been outlawed for some time. And Brian Lone is down receiving attention to his left knee. Dr. Pori Quinn is in there to attend to him. Medical officer with the side for a long number of years. Well, in fact, I've spoken a little prematurely. There he is arriving on the scene. Brian Lone, who's epitomised Clare's greatness in hurling over the past eight years. Today playing in his 35th championship match. So a big day for Eadon Maxivna and his uh, match officials, John Guinan from Kilkenny and Eamon Morris from Dublin, his linesmen. Well, now Clare already having lost their right half back, David Howey, replaced by Connor Plunkett. They could ill afford to lose Brian Lowen. Of course, he missed the league match three weeks ago against the same opposition. And on that occasion, I seem to remember Ronan O'Looney came in, man from Ina. And there is some jostling, and more than just jostling, happening out around the centre of the field, involving two men from each team. Big tall number eight there is... Well, it's Dierma Bakbahan, but he's meant to be number nine, according to the programme. Yeah, the ref want to get the game flowing, Jerry, because the more they hang around, the more they're getting to know one another. So a switch of numbers at midfield as well for Clare. Colin Lynch and Dearbid McMahon switching the eight and the nine jerseys. Sir Alliance there. Leading the Clare challenge once again this season. That's Markham coming in with the shoulder. And it's whipped away from danger there by Paul Kelly. Nine ball. This was it again here. The shoulder in from Markham. And eventually watch for the number seven. The wing back, the tidy Paul Kelly. Belting that one forward was Niall Gilligan. Could have gone anywhere. And in the end, it's uh, a judge to have gone off a Tipperary stick. That's Andrew Quinn there, one of those players who played in an All-Ireland final, came in briefly in last year's final. And for his second championship match, this is his first test of a taste of playing in the Munster Championship itself. Jerry, you're going to find along the sideline here, you have to pick your spot because it's very, very wet down there. There won't be any movement on the ball, it'll just kind of stick in the ground. Colin Lynch to strike this one. He's done really well to get uh, a bit of movement on that one. Didn't quite get the direction, but he hit it well nonetheless. So it remains two points to no score in Clare's favour. Puck out's taken very quickly. Connor Plunkett back there, sweeping behind his centre half back. Shawnee McMahon, his team captain. Here's Brian Horgan, just starting his second ever championship match. 
James Z O'Connor. Inside here to Colin Lynch, wearing number nine. And Lynch knocks it over the bar. Lovely movement involving James E. O'Connor initially. Then Lynch coming through from midfield, making the extra man, getting the space and getting the point. Three points to no score. But bear in mind all this while that Clare have the wind and Tip have yet to get going. And with the head of Noel Morris that time coming in to help. Team captain Brian O'Mara <laughs> that time by Jerry Quinn. Little tangle of legs, nothing very much in it. The referee then saw the verbal protest or heard the verbal protest and decides to penalise Clare an extra 13 metres. Yes, so so they are nearer to go. So far, Jerry O'Mara is the one player that, that Tipperary are on top on the far wing. He's winning a lot of ball off Quinn. So this a chance then for Tipperary to just settle down, get their opening score of the match. Nearly 11 minutes gone. Just waiting for a replacement slitter. Davy Fitzgerald finally pucking the ball out in the general direction there. The man who's going to take this free, Owen Kelly. One of the great young hurlers to grace the playing fields of Ireland. Good shot. Fine point from the free. Owen Kelly tip get going in a scoring sense and it's three points to one goalkeeper Davy Fitzgerald who is a scratch golfer hitting this one out down towards now Gilligan Noel Morris going back picked it up low did as much as was necessary Paul Kelly beyond O'Mara this time easy one for the wing back to get onto and Jerry Quinn drives it back down towards James O'Connor runs loose over to Martin Maher out towards side towards Paul Kelly good ball into space and that was Brian Quinn coming across trying to close it down but instead the dancing feet there of Owen Kelly at the other end snapshot goes wide this was a an inviting ball across here which uh, Kelly made the most of up to the final execution switching the Tipperary half forward line incidentally has shown Connor Gleeson going across to right half forward and he has switched there with uh, Brian O'Mara Brian now on the 40 and on Shawnee McMahon Noel Morris great take there by Brian Quinn from Tulla down towards his brother Andrew flicking it on Paul Kelly going back trying to nurse it up onto the stick coming across there was Martin Maher here's the new fullback Paul Curran on his championship debut trying to get a bit of confidence going comes back out here once again Carmody didn't get great length into that one Kennedy here fumbling somewhat challenge coming in and it's Colin Lynch shoulder coming in there from Benny Dunn Again, they move forward with some purpose here. A real opportunity to go! Jim. James E. O'Connor! He's back to a question and didn't clear even whether he had appetite for the game, but he saw it there, got a lovely break and stuck it in the back of the net. Give the goalie no chance. Well, just his second ever goal in championship hurling, and Clare are turning it on in Cork. Well, there were massive gaps there in that Tipperary defence. The fullback pulled out of position. Look at the extra man over, and that was Jamesy. Kicked forward this time by Dermot McMahon. Good spell this for Clare. But I think Surrey was making the point before the start of the match. With a win behind them, they're going to have to uh, get a decent lead built up by half time. Line ball to Clare. Once again, it'll be Colin Lynch will take him. This is it once again, and that was well, as easy as you like from James E. O'Connor. Colin Lynch to drive this. Again, making a good connection into space towards James E. Marr chasing after it. Curran's there as well, but it's Marr who's out nearest to it. Now, Brian O'Mara. Low up towards Owen Kelly. Two men on him. Went off the stick there, it seemed, of Jerry Quinn. And the uh, lines went aside. It was a tip man who touched it last because it appears it's going to be a clear ball. 
So a satisfying start from a clear point of view. Surrey Lions, their team manager. Great cut towards James O'Connor. Battling over there is the player number two, who is Martin Marr. Martin, who is a cousin of Philly. Uh, what a big, big loss his cousin is to the Tipperary full back line this afternoon. They often say that it's only when you are missing that you are shown up for what a great player you were. This is towards John Carroll. Brushed aside there by Brian Lowen. Lowen doing a little solo to himself. Carroll sticking doggedly to his task. La Corbett wants it. There's a lot of Clare players there. Brian Quinn rolling it onto a stick, hand passing it outside, and McMahon getting it away out of danger. Not too far, however. Noel Morris back in once again. Brian O'Mara partly blocked that time by Markham. Markham does well, kicks it forward. And the referee saw a late challenge and a foul, and it's going to be a free to Clare from inside their own 65 metre line. Yeah, Joe, you can see that Clare really fired up. They will also feel like they'll try to exploit the, the Tipperary full back line, which is very new. We have Martin Maher, Paul Corn, and Benny Dunn, all good hurlers. They need time to settle down, and Clare would want to be really taken to get them because there is a strong breeze out there, and they're going to need seven or eight points by half time. As you say, good hurlers, but they're not being allowed that time to enjoy an apprenticeship. This is the Monster Championship, and this is where it counts. You can have all the challenge matches under the sun. Sean McMahon, six points in last year's All-Ireland final. He was the third highest scorer that day. And that's over the bar. His first long-range free, and the captain supplies the score, and it's 1-4 to a point. He has now scored an amazing 69 points in championship hurling from centre-half back. Brendan Cummins. The rain comes down again. Dermot McMahon rises up. Brian Horgan getting it out towards O'Mara. It's Conor Gleeson instead. Gleeson now at right half forward. Inside towards Brian Carroll. What a great take that time. It was Brian Lohan who got there ahead of John Carroll. And another Brian, Brian Quinn, is just in behind in case there's a mistake. There wasn't. But back up to Ferrari. O'Mara can't make headway. Brian Lord stopping the attack. Outside towards Colin Lynch, running straight into Noel Morris. And with determination of the left boot, he gets it downfield. That's forward there, one-handed, and somehow would reach us Tony Griffin. Dermot McMahon, a low on the ground. Reaching Niall Gilligan, hand-passing into the clear to Al Markham. The challenge coming in doesn't make any ground, however. Markham loses it. Gilligan, the backup. 23 metres out, and the shot from Gilligan has gone wide. That seems to be the Achilles heel in his particular game. Gets an awful lot of chances, but this was a great catch at the other end there from Brian Lowen, watching John Carroll in behind him. One slip, and the tip man was in. Brendan Cummins, who's been part and parcel of Tipperary sides, going right back to the mid-90s. That's the left half back, Paul Kelly, under pressure, Alan Markin. Holding possession well, good vision. Once again, it's Lynch coming forward. He's got a man in support outside if he needed him. Colin Lynch raiding, two after him. This is a great run. This is to Andrew Quinn, and it's managed to sneak in. Yeah, Colin Lynch is coming right down the middle, no one goes from the right to the last second, the ball is split across the Quinn and stuck in the back of the net, very tight angle, a great score, but no one came to Lynch to back off, this is the inexperience of the full back line, and when they come to leave the car, full forward completely free, he does well to get it sneaked in, Brendan Cummins will be mad at himself, as went in on the short side. Well, it got in at the near post to make it 2-4 to a point, I wonder if it went off the leg of Brendan Cummins that time on its way in, it's immaterial. Well, what a start then for Andrew Quinn in this Monster Championship as we watched him at McMahon in midfield. But this was the raid again. This was the run. And again, the defence all over the place. And that full-back line in real trouble. James O'Connor taking the resultant free from way out the field. And that has gone wide. Problems for the Tipperary management. 
OK, they'll have the wind at their backs for the second 35 minutes, but Michael Doyle and his fellow selectors have some problems to address, and they are Liam Sheehy and, of course, Kevin Fox as well. That's flicked on there by Tommy Dunn. Haven't seen much of him so far. Sean McMahon galvanising his fellow defenders into action. That's Benny Dunn going back. I know some Tipperary followers would like to see him play further out the field, but he's in at left corner back this afternoon. That is Jerry Quinn down towards James O'Connor against Martin Mahar. He's going to prove quite a handful. Comedy's coming onto it. Still an opportunity here. The hand pass inside towards Quinn. They had other players available as well. And in the end, the chance goes a begging. And it's Paul Curran, the new Tipperary fullback, who emerges with it. James O'Connor racing after him. Oof. Now they're in difficulty because Claire of a man over. The fullback's out of position. Colin Lynch whipping it in, driving it towards Brendan Cummins. Good stop. A little stumble here, but recovery by Martin Marr. O'Mara and Gleeson over there to try and torment the Clare half back line, but they haven't been do doing too much tormenting so far. And it's one back again in midfield, and Colin Lynch, what a match he's playing, picking up an awful lot of breaking ball. O'Mara's after him. Can't dispossess him, and then the vision to try and pick out a colleague on the wing, but Gilligan was nowhere near that. It's Benny Dunn instead. Now, Paul Kelly. This is David Kennedy. Needs a very steadying performance this afternoon at centre-half back. And they've been under pressure. The ball has been coming right into the teeth of that Tipperary defence all throughout this first half. 21 and a half minutes gone. Morris back out here. The darting run forward of Owen Kelly. But he's well away from goal as he was hitting that one. It comes off the post and it's gone back down into safety. Or has it? No, it's gone over. Davey was ready to play on. But the point credited to Owen Kelly. And that is his second of the match. Watch it again here. Came off the angle. And uh, touched the post. And hit the post inside and bounced back out. A point. Good decision. Dermot McMahon towards James e. O'Connor. Touchdown. Gilligan was there if it came his way. He didn't quite manage to do so. Here's David Kennedy. Hands and knees job. And he's blocked. And the tip defence looking slow and cumbersome. Not as fresh as the Clare attack. And this much maligned Clare attack, it has to be said, over the years. Brian Hogan getting that one away. Now Brian Quinn. The Quinn brothers operating at either end of the field this afternoon. For Clare McMahon reaching out. Colin Lynch once again. Somebody has to start picking him up. He's getting so much ball. Line ball to Ferrari. Yeah, so far, Jerry Colin Lynch is having the power of a game midfield. He's wandering all over the place, and he seems to be really mopping it up. Tip are going back into the game. That was a great score by Owen Kelly. They're, only, they're eight points down, but they're clear are going to need all these scores, and they want to, they're after missing one or two, they want to tackle them on. Well, Brian O'Mara is going to cross to pick up Colin Lynch just as this attack is building. I mean, there's nobody else going near him. I don't think they've made a switch or anything like that, but right now, there's another scoring opportunity, and a familiar style of Niall Gilligan, the auctioneer from Clare. And Gilligan whips it over the bar. It's his second point of the afternoon. But again, the chances are just building up for the Clare forwards, and they're taking them. Brendan Cummins ready to pop this one out. Again, looking at the national flag down at the Black Rock end, it looks uh, as though there is quite a strong wind whipping behind Clare in the first half, as that's belted back down by Tony Carmody. In difficulty there is Paul Curran, a bit slow to get back into his full-back position. Brian Horgan getting it away. I think the Tipperary management were very, very displeased with the opening that they've made here, and rightly so. The race on here, Lar Corbett hasn't had a shot so far. He's got possession now, back to Cahill, running into Brian Lowen. Great combined play. And look where Markham has come back from right half forward, back to the full back line to help out. And that's the spirit of this team this afternoon as Andrew Quinn drives it in and he's hit it away to the left hand side. 2-5 to 2 points, nearly 25 minutes are gone in Cork in the first round of the Guinness Monster Hurling Championship. 
not going according to plan for Tipperary and for Brendan Cummins. His goal under siege. Conor Gleeson has gone back out, it would seem, but this is uh, the other man who's as tall as himself. Brian O'Mara rating through the centre this time, stumbling, falling, but he still has possession on a throw the ball away anywhere, hoping to pick up a colleague, and instead it's Jerry Quinn scooping away out of danger. Cahill goes back at left half forward, one-handed away. Now Tony Griffin was supported there by Frank Lowen. Way down to Andrew Quinn once again. What a dream Monster Championship debut this is. And he underlines that with another shot, but this time he's put it wide, but only inches outside. He's a good player, and he's causing problems. Yeah, Jerry has very good wrists. He is a good player, very strong on his feet, but he should be, if he's not going to score for them, he should be playing across out the pitch. They are on top, and they want to be taking these chances, because Tipper's still in this game, and there is a long, long way to go. Strong breeze behind Clare. Clare with four wide so far. Tipperary with two. Dermot McMahon forward by Liam Cahill sideline ball well, this is hardly the Tipperary team we saw in the Allianz National League final bank holiday Monday when they put up that uh, score of five goals and 13 points aren't you there were signals there that their defense was in trouble when they conceded five goals as well and a lot of points this is Gleason Captain in 97, runs on beyond the ball, Owen Kelly trying to win, Frank Lowen trying to keep him away, David Fitzgerald coming out, trying to nurse it up onto his stick, does so successfully, and getting it away, and the referee's whistle as sounds as the goalkeeper goes down in a heap, feeling the left-hand side of his face. David Fitzgerald taking it away here, what happened to it? Oh, we got a tap there from Larkor, but that's what happened. Oh, felt that. Made his debut back in 1990 against Limerick, ever present since then, the six mile bridge man. There's an awful lot of good coaching as well in and around Clare. Brian Lowen, the taker of the free, towards Tony Griffin, one handed forward, Niall Gilligan. Get, trying to get it onto the stick, but it's Paul Kelly instead, looking for his brother or Brian O'Mara. Anybody from Mullen Hall will do. They won the Tipperary County Championship, of course, for the first time last season beating uh, Thurlis Sarsfields hence they have the captaincy of this Tipperary team that man being Brian O'Mara and O'Mara I think is going to leave it to his club mate Owen Kelly to take well in the home team by the way was trained coached and led on the field by one John Lahey out of course with a second cruciate ligament injury and we wish him well great player chance then for another temporary score from Owen Kelly well he had the distance but not the accuracy it's not going Tipperary's way only two points and 28 minutes are played okay they're against the wind but they're not functioning as a unit they're lacking the cohesiveness the drive the determination and the leadership but there's a long way to go David Kennedy in trouble again at center half back Quinn blocked down this time that was Curran who got in the first block, Paul Kelly got the second. Tony Carmody racing away here from Brian Horgan. Not close enough to put in a telling challenge, and that is over the bar. Poor defending by Tipperary, but credit the man who came through to hit it. And a very good score indeed by Carmody to make it 2-6 to two points. Well, by my little records here on my match programme, four of the six forwards from Clare have now scored. And they're all fully involved in the action, and they are tormenting Tip, the favourites. David Kennedy. Broken down here by Conor Plunkett, needing Markham to come and help him. What a match he's playing, so industrious. Paul Curran reaching up for it, touching it down, but only as far as Gilligan, ready to take on. Martin Maher, there's been a switch of the marking back there. Maher has got across with Benny Dunn to uh, switch around the men that they're due to, to, uh, to look after as the referee is looking after one of the Tipperary players back there he's having words with Martin Maher you see Joe what actually happened was uh, Gilligan went to show him the ball and would say here I got the free off you and Maher did a little strike I hit him actually on the elbow I'd say you know yeah. six of one half dozen other well it's a yellow card for Martin Maher 
now operating at left corner back on Gilligan he's been warned any more of that yeah here it is Jerry you can see it here again now Gilligan actually wins his free there gets the belt there and he comes around he's going to get his free and he just shows him the ball then look goes back to him and shoves it into him can't do that shoves into his face the ref's going to give a throw in now James O'Connor is getting some attention there from Porrick Quinn, the doctor. It's a blood substitution that will be required urgently. James is off the down to 14, need a fresh man in. Tip with a lot to do. Two six to two points down, under pressure. Colin Lynch, the master, back to mark him. Great performance by the half-forward line, but a great performance by each and every one of them so far as Markham drives it over. Markham from Kilmally, cousin of Sean McMahon and Dermot McMahon makes it 2-7 to two points. But really, they are just being given so much space, it is ridiculous. Well, we've just seen a uh, blood substitution there. That's Barry Murphy from Scarif coming on there. Just on for a few minutes because James will come back on. Barry Murphy normally with very, very dark hair, but he's been to the Barbers recently. And that right now was Paul Curran tripping and falling. And the referee sees that James Z is ready to come back into the action. And so it will be Barry Murphy who will make way, I'm sure. Finally spots the number 12 coming back in. So off goes Murphy. Free for Tipperary. Brian Horgan, the taker. About three and a half minutes of normal time left in the first half. John Carroll trying to set something up. The pass runs astray, runs loose. Brian Quinn in there, sticking to the ground, his feet firmly on it. No way through. And then it's the turn of Cahill to take the loose ball and put it over the bar. Well, it's only their third point. Liam Cahill's first and the other two scores coming from Owen Kelly. And one of those from a free all a bit messy, all a bit scrappy. It seemed as though Brian Quinn had buried himself in the ground and was letting nothing through. But when the ball broke loose, in came Cowell. Right now, in comes Paul Kelly. And he's put it well, well wide, the left half back. Paul Kelly from uh, Mullinahone. And it gives the back division there that extra little bit of experience. And my goodness, they are needing it this afternoon. This is a huge task for Tipperary, who are about to make a change. And Owen Brislane from Toomey Vara is about to come in. He made a big impression in the league final, and he's coming on now for Noel Morris. I think Noel Morris went off certainly briefly, maybe a bit more than briefly, in that final against, against uh, Kilkenny. He's off now, and there's a fresh midfield pairing. And he's gone straight in on Colin Lynch. That's where the danger is coming from. And you can bet you can, you can him in any one direction. He'll, he'll start mixing him because this guy is a tough bit of stuff. He's from Tumavara and he won't stand around the ceremony either. He'll get stuck in. He's stuck in already. Gleason thundering ahead. McMahon lets it run on. It runs on to Lark Corbett, the thirdless man. Blocked down well by Brian Quinn. Lost it the first time, came back well. There was some holding. Corbett has engineered a free late in this first half. Tip needing a few more scores. I'd like to be a fly on the wall in that Tipperary dressing room at half time. There will be some harsh words to be said. Forget about the back door. They both want to win here. Pride is at stake and advancement. Owen Kelly keeping Tipperary in touch. Another pointed free. So now it's 2-7 to four points. Still a fair gap to make up, but they're capable of doing it. Not quite sure how many extra minutes to be added on here at the end of the first 35. Didn't see the board. There's Owen Brislane. Connor Gleeson going in as well, using his weight and physique. The referee might opt to throw the ball in. They're still battling away in the heavy conditions here. Oh, 
Brisbane is letting Leo Kimber do the work in there, and the referee says, hang on a while here, you're at the wrong show. He hasn't changed, it's the same old Brisbane, he's tough and gets stuck in, but that's a stupid thing to do. At this stage, you're Tipperary playing actually three men midfield, they pulled out Brian uh, Carroll from full forward just to try to hold uh, clear to this lead. I tell you what, Brian O'Mara was in danger of getting the belt of that from him in Brisbane. I presume he has managed to, to get himself a yellow card after just a matter of two minutes on the field of play. So that's two yellow cards in the first half. The first dished out to Martin Maher. There's the second. So the green helmet is gone. Enough, enough of the niceties. Let's get down to business, seems to be what his body language is telling us. Jerry Quinn being swung around over there. That's John Carroll, and uh, he was out over the sideline, far side. John Guinan is the linesman over there. And that's going to be a line ball to Clare. But overall, the first half performance from a Clare point of view, satisfactory, I'd imagine. Yeah, Ger, they'll be very happy if they can win off in, in at half time nine or ten points. But they're probably going to need it because Tip will come into the game. Like, and you notice Paul Kelly and these guys are starting to fire. On the far wing, uh, like O'Mara and Owen, Owen Kelly are causing a lot of trouble. If they get ball, they will score. Jerry Quinn driving it in towards Andrew Quinn, his namesake. This is Markham. Little block on it in towards James e. O'Connor. Runs away off the legs there of Benny Dunn. Back out once again towards Andrew Quinn, and he's put it over. He's playing well. That's now a goal and a point for Andrew Quinn. Missed a pretty good chance as well, but he's made it 2 8 to 4 points. Approaching half time. Tip realizing that in this, the fifth year in succession, that they've been playing against Clare. But Clare have this enormous incentive to prevail this afternoon. That's down by Tony Carmody at left half forward, wearing number 14. There he is again. Griffin now. Hitting it from just outside the 45 meter line. They will all count and they may all be needed before the scores are tallied at the end. Good work indeed by Tony Griffin. So everybody in the forward line for Clare has now scored. And we haven't got to half time just yet. Yeah, Jerry, I'd have to say that all the switches that Claire have made have really worked so far. Griffin is doing a master's degree in English at UL. Wow, he'll be able to write volumes about this if Claire go on to win the first major match against Tipperary for quite a few years. There he is again, three men on him, trying to kick it away anywhere, trying to link up with a loose man who was Colin Lynch, couldn't find him. Referee will have to throw this one in once again. Three and a half minutes, or sorry, two and a half minutes now of injury time has been played. Brislin, beaten for it by Colin Lynch, runs on kindly for Niall Gilligan. Familiar style of Gilligan, lovely strike, striking it off the right, although I think he's a natural left-hander. And that's his third point from play, and it's 210 to four points. Yeah, and in clear, Jared, they say that this guy doesn't play well against Tip, but he's proven him wrong today. That full forward line are really going to town in the full back line. Well, there's going to be another change made by Tipperary. Brian Horgan's going to come off, and coming into the game will be Tom Costello, the man from Kappa White, who played during last year's championship as a right corner back. Recently called back into the panel. Tipperary acknowledging that they are in difficulty, real genuine difficulty, has been from the time the ball was thrown in, and the first 15 has been changed twice already. Colin Lynch is going off, or not Colin Lynch, it's, uh, that looks to me to be Dermot McMahon going off with a blood injury. They attend to it quickly, Ollie Baker maybe the one who'll come in for the couple of moments left in this first half. Great first half from a clear point of view. Very satisfying. Tip with a lot to do. Connor Gleason trying to thread his way forward there as Solly Baker comes into the action as a blood substitution. He's into midfield in place of Dermot McMahon. There's Colin Lynch shaking the head. Gleason from Bohrlach and Duala giving this free to be taken by Owen Kelly and thrusting it to the number 13. McMahon is back in the action, by the way. Baker is out. And that is over. Paul Kelly's points just about keeping Tipperary in touch. He scored four, and three of them have been from freeze. 210 to five points. 
and that I think is it at the end of the first half where Clare's game plan was Joe Cadigan, Cyril Farrell and Porky Keeve yes welcome back here so a lot of hard work to do for Tipperary 11 points behind no changes in personnel for the start of the second half a couple of positional switches been made by Tipperary in their defense and straight away the Clare backs are under pressure and even further pressure now for remonstrating with referee Eldon Maxivna the action comes forward to the 45 meter line I've noticed that Tom Costro came on very late in the first half has gone to left corner back wearing number 20 picking up Gilly and uh, Paul Kelly has come across this side his right half back meanwhile his brother Owen knocking in the first one and knocking it over the bar first of the second half in front of an attendance of 20,139 2-8, yeah. 2 10 rather, to 6 points. Yeah, even though Clare are now the 10 times up, they're going to need it all because there is a strong breeze down there and I expect Chip to come back into this game. The breeze, if anything, has whipped up since the start of the action at a quarter past four this afternoon. John Carroll, his inside forward line got very little of the ball in the first half. This is a great start. Two attacks, two points. The recovery is on. First chance he's got. So two, three or nine points between the teams. Very much an individual piece of skill by John Carroll. The man does not get the credit he deserves, but this deserves everything because it tells you straight away that picture just how strong the wind is here at Porky Cui by the banks of the Lee. It's dried up considerably. It's very heavy and wet down in that particular part of the field. As we watch Dermot McMahon for Clare drive in the first wide of the second half. Yeah, there's well here in the, se in the second half, Ger. Binny Dunn has gone out wing back. Now, Tip have thrown caution to the win. Michael Dyle, it's a big test from his manager. He's pushed up Dunn, who's an attacking wing back, and they'll have to go for everything. Go for Bro. It is indeed his first test in the Guinness Monster Hurling Championship. Round one or the quarterfinals, whichever you prefer. So we should be in for a rip-rolling second half. Sean McMahon getting that ball away to his cousin Dearmuid. Held well here, under some difficulty. Nicely away by Martin Maher. Jerry Quinn back there for Clare, the left half back. Into the centre, blocked down there by Tony Carmody. Brian O'Mara trying to get some... Grip on this, James E is out gone to ground, and the referee's whistle sounds, and he tries to restore a little bit of order to what was becoming a little chaotic. So the Dubliner, Elthorne Maxivna, very highly respected referee, throwing that ball in, which is won by Brislane, the substitute from the first half. Brian Lowen made his championship debut back in 1993, so 10 years on the go at this level. Andrew Quinn leaving this one behind to Tony Griffin beating the block of Kennedy, who is yet to establish mastery at centre-half back. James O'Connor, jersey seems to be pulled back. He's still got it, still tries to go by. Martin Maher in the end, repeatedly fouling him, and in the end, the referee whistles in for a clear free. This should settle their nerves. It's a chance of their first point of the second half. Yeah, Ger, uh, James did very well here, because he was paying for a free. He's been tackling hard, but he's fouled there first time, but he knows what's going to happen, and he, he needs a free. They need his score. He's a battler, James O'Connor. Sarah Lyons has done a terrific job there with the backroom team leading the side led them to an All-Ireland final he was quoted during the week as saying well whatever people said went wrong last week we must have done it last year we must have done something right we got to the final Gilligan typical style typical stance typical finish from a free interesting there Gerard, that James would usually take that he called over Gilligan to take his probably shook after the tackle and just felt that Gilligan is on top form Well, struck very nicely indeed. Jamesy playing at top of the left, although in the way the game is right now, the inside, the corner forwards have gone back towards half forward because they expect, I'm sure, much of the play to be down at the other end of the field. Aided by the breeze, Brislane coming for Tipperary, whipped in towards John Carroll, won well by Brian Quinn, outside towards Frank Lowen. Frank, who works and plays here in Cork, Took a shoulder, a hard one. Jerry Quinn getting it away up towards 
James O'Connor, Andrew Quinn, two Tipperary men in there to try and dispossess him. He's still going forward. Kennedy coming across. That's a bit better from the centre half back. Blocked down well. Two against him, and in the end, it'll need the intervention of the match referee just to uh, settle things down before they boil a bit. Then the referee will throw the ball in. Paul Kelly will be the action for Tipperary. Tony Griffin is there for Clare. And uh, Tony hops away from it at the end, as you can see. Damages his left ankle. And Clare get themselves a free in. This is what was happening there. A wild pull by Paul Kelly. Free in. So a chance for another Clare score as Paul Curran makes his way back. Incidentally, he is a, he's a student at uh, WIT. Did very well in the Fitzgibbon Cup this year. Captain the side. Might have gone to America, but was needed. Gilligan, always needed. On his left-hand side, this has gone well away to the right. So one out of two at the start of the second half. They can't afford to miss chances like that. And the man who should have been marking him Benny Dunn takes an easy clearance from the puck out and drives it back towards Brian O'Mara. Can't hold on to it. It's Gleason coming in here. Tommy Dunn, an anonymous figure so far. Not anymore. Tommy Dunn from Tumibara points early stages of the second half to keep the Tipperary recovery on track. Nine between them once again. It was 11 at half time. And this is the first score, first opening for Tommy Dunn. Now you can hear the Tipperary fans getting right behind their team. That goes up towards Tony Griffin, missed by everybody. Tony Carmody into the inside forward line. James e. O'Connor left his hurley behind him, about 10 metres behind him, was crawling across towards it. And again, another pile-up, and uh, time and again, the referee has had to blow up the play and throw the ball in. And uh, today it's so difficult for players on both teams. Rain for most of the week here in Cork. And as a result, the playing conditions are far from ideal. That's away by Benny Dunn up towards O'Mara. Brian O'Mara turning against his man, who is Jerry Quinn, running into Tony Griffin. The hand pass into the clearance here. And Carmody was well away from the target, but it's still in play. Brendan Cummins, a long, long clearance. Win behind him now, remember. Frank Lohan has possession, but it wasn't Frank who was involved in all of that. It was Sean McMahon holding back his man, and it's going to be a free into Tipperary. The captain can protest, all in vain. Another Tipperary free. Another opportunity for Tommy Dunn. Just inside the 65-meter line. Should be able to ease this one between the posts. Drops it in instead and drops it to the left and is put it wide. It's a let off job. It didn't come up right from at all. He had to snap at it. You're just when you're rising the ball, it's the most important part of the free take. And it just didn't come up for him. Well, you walked the ground earlier on, and our shoes, when we were down there doing our piece at about 2.15, they were sinking into the ground on the near side. But as you got further into the field, it wasn't quite so bad. Brislane. And Colin Lynch, it's Lynch who doesn't stand on ceremony, goes in. Very determined, very focused. Beyond comedy this time, Gilligan comes across. Diagonal run made, possession claimed. Back towards Andrew Quinn. Beating the challenge of Paul Curran. Does it go inside the right-hand post? Not quite, it's batted away. Out towards Benny Dunn once again, stumbling there to get away from Griffin. McMahon waits for it to come towards him leaving it for Brian O'Mara of Tipperary as they try to achieve some kind of mastery and supremacy at midfield. But Clare doggedly fighting back, expecting a big challenge from Tip in the second half, but showing the fight themselves. Tony Griffin trying to turn by Benny Dunn out into space this time. Nicely taken up by Colin Lynch onto his left-hand side, going for the pot himself, and it's over the bar. 
He's some player, Joe, like he's dominating again. The barometer is land to upset him, and he did for a while, but Lynch is popping up of all the places. He's holding clear, just keeping him that few points in front the whole time. It's as good a display as I've seen from Colin Lynch of this standard of play. Just drifting away over there, Brislane, a little slow to come after him, and he can hit them from any angle. Oh, picked up very low indeed by Frank Lowen, and it's going to be a free in. No protests from the big number four. Yeah, Jerry, he'd be disgusted with himself there. They're after fighting hard to get a good score for, you know, above the other end, and now they give away a very soft free. So the pickup resulting in the free to Owen Kelly and Tipperary, five points so far for him. One from play, four from freeze. And that comes off the post and back down. Conor Gleeson turning and striking it over into the Black Rock end, into the crowd, but more importantly, over the bar. His first point. 2-12 to nine points for Gleeson there. When he captained Tipperary in 1997, the year the Premier met, Premier men met and lost, of course, twice to Clare. He wasn't going to be beaten on this occasion. Well, that's Louis Malqueen, I think, over there, is it? No, it's not. I don't think it is. Didn't quite uh, get close enough to see Louis. He's one of the three selectors. Great character. Both sides considering switches and changes in this uh, new type of game we have nowadays where you can use five subs. Deal with McMahon up towards James e. O'Connor firing it into the corner saying to the master who's a lot of mileage on the clock what can you do against young Martin Ma Ma without the hurley dominant takes it up well good play by the number two outside to Owen Brislane good block down by Colin Lynch comes back towards Dermot McMahon little balancing act takes one shoulder then a second and the jersey was tugged in the end and it's going to be a free in and again despite the protest from Tommy Don and from Brian O'Mara the referee is the man with the final say. And once again, a team has been penalised for protesting. And the action brought forward. This was good skill here by Martin Marr. Went down very low in the end to pick it up. But the uh, referee says there was enough of a bounce in it. And it all ends up with Claire having a free in. Closer to the, thar the, the target. 13 metres closer. Gilligan to hit. Free taker from the second half now here. He's got five points in the match. He's pointed two of the last three frees that he's taken. You're expecting the fire from Tipperary. You're expecting something special from the team that finished second in the National League. And rated by so many the second strongest power in hurling at the present time after Kilkenny. But they're not delivering, and it's Clare who are continuing to press. Curran's shot just screwing away off his stick. Fortunate that there's support there from Paul Kelly. Help coming in again. Liam Cahill has switched across to the right hand side, chasing after him Connor Plunkett, who tracked him. Down in there broken down, coming forward Tommy Dunn John Carroll, the pass runs away a little bit awkwardly, Brian Lowen given enough chance to show what a commanding figure he is at fullback to take it away, out to Plunkett the shoulder from Gleeson, back on his feet again, blocked down, O'Mara 45 metres out, is this over? They look at it, it is Brian O'Mara his first point to 13 to 10 points but there is that gap of nine between them the whole times as Tipperary are ready to withdraw Lar Corbett I can tell you as we watch this in reprise Omaris point and the next piece of action will be a substitution coming in is Eddie Enright who starred many a time in the Tipperary colors very prominent at last year's championship run so Lark Corbett, who didn't score and did, who didn't have a profitable afternoon in Cork, is off. Yeah. 
And again, it's claimed brilliantly at midfield by McMahon. Great catch on to Tony Carmody. Picked the full forward, but playing at half. Andrew Quinn dodging three men around him. They try to get it away to David Kennedy. All a bit despairing from a temporary point of view. And once again, the referee says, I have to intervene. That must be about six times it's happened. Yeah, so that's to do with the ground, though, Jordan. That yeah. ball won't fly in, and so wet underneath. Conditions are very, very difficult. But they're difficult for both teams. As Carmody whips it in, Brendan Cummins watches it all the way. The sun's come out, it's behind him at this stage. Out to Benny Dunn. And going across there to try and dispossess him was Colin Lynch. This man is showing the hunger and the appetite for the game, which is so praiseworthy. Major, he's really fired up and he's very, very fit, man, because like, he's covering every you know, inch of blade of grass on the, on the pitch. Interesting what he does for a living. For the second year in succession now, he is uh, a coaching development officer in Clare, so he's at the game the whole time at all levels. That's out of danger for Clare. Up towards Alan Markham. And once again, it's Colin Lynch, the star of the show, without a doubt. This is Martin Marr. Jamesy O'Connor chases after him. So too is Andrew Quinn. They appeal for everything. The little smile on the face there will indicate that Clare are the happier. They've yeah. got the sideline ball, and this is what led up to it. And Marr getting the shoulder there from Quinn. He stepped out over the line. You could see it plainly. It's going Clare's way, but there's a long way to go. Only about 16 and a half minutes into the second half. Tipperary need goals and they need scores and they need dominance and mastery in key areas and that's not coming Lynch good strike again from the word go he's been hitting the ball well this is Benny Dunn little scooping run but they were spotting that one and it was Gilligan who was back there tracking helped out by Dermot McMahon into the space Martin Maher against Jamesy and Jamesy knocked a ball shoulder to shoulder, a bit of a push in the back. Free out to Tipperary. Well, the teams may be meeting for the fifth year in succession, but they've attracted a crowd of over 20,000 here, which was about the figure expected by the officials of the Munster Council. And when you consider the very heavy rain this morning, people were leaving spots in Clare and Tipperary they probably said to themselves it's too wet hardly worth making the effort as Dermot McMahon will have to be replaced at least momentarily so another blood substitution and the last time this happened for Clare it was Ollie Baker who came on and he's the man entrusted with the responsibility again last time out I think he got about 10 seconds the running repair is particularly fast there Cummins way down the field, stopped by Sean McMahon. Markham is popping up everywhere. Brislane is there for company, trying to take it from him. And again, the whistle has sounded, and it's going to be a free in. Yeah, Joe, what's happened with Markham? He's gone back very deep. Morris into the halfback of her pair. Payne is a kind of a fourth halfback than a such, but even Benny don't wing back Morris on his own. So it's working in one way, and another way he's getting cut out. So once again, the sharpshooter, Owen Kelly, being a right good look at the target. They need everything, and he has put this one wide. Not one of those days. Barring a huge transformation, it looks like it's going to be Clare's victory. But there's still a long way to go. And in this first major test of the management of Michael Doyle, well, it's a huge test and it's a huge mountain that he's got to try and shift in some way, shape or form. Benny Dunn drifting forward, Markham drifting back. Colin Lynch giving leadership. Well, we think in times, or from time to time, about the various leaders that Clare have had over the last 10 years, but they all seem to be leaders. And watch now, right now as Owen Kelly strikes this one, and that's a great deal better, more difficult than many of the other shots. 
an awkward angle it's a six point he's keeping the minute a lot of play still to go 213 to 11 points and now the Tipperary fans are beginning to come to life and beginning to feel that there's a lot more life in their team just yet So now it's up to Clare once again to weather whatever storm they're going to experience in the next 10 minutes. Crucial stage in the game coming up. That was Jerry Quinn going down, also going down Connor Gleeson, going in, the referee and the medical officers. Here it was again here. Ooh, very hefty. John Carroll was the man who was the third part of that equation. Standing over the falling bodies. Yeah, you could find Jerno that Conor Gleeson is hurt as much there as anyone else. Owen Kelly at this stage has gone in full forward and he's the one Tipperary player that's really kind of on song. He's beautiful wrist and any chance he'll get, he'll score. He's keeping Tip in the game. That looked very nasty indeed, as you say. And I'm just looking at Jerry Quinn reeling in some agony right now. And he is in a lot of distress, feeling the pain. Trying to sit up. Conor Gleeson he's okay he'll be able to continue at least the injured Clare player is sitting up attended by the team doctor hopefully he'll be able to battle on Colin Flynn is in there as well team physio man who's also been associated with the sport of boxing in Clare down the years so Gleeson's back in on the 40 you mentioned a little while ago, Cyril, that Owen Kelly has a new position. That is full forward. Brian Lowen's got in to mark him. That's Jerry Quinn. Jerry from Corifin. 22-year-old who's been studying business at UL. And now in business on his own in his uh, native Heath. This is it again. Different angle. Painful. But thankfully, everybody back on their feet once again. 22 minutes gone in this second half. Still a lot of time to go. Clare have been the masters, but there's a lot of fight, I'm certain, left in Tipperary. McMahon to take the free inside his own 65-metre line. Into the breeze. Sending it in towards the 20-metre line. Once again, going back there to take possession. And getting it away from danger, Tom Costello. Back once more it comes from Considine. Or what a comedy, I should say. Breaks out loose. Gilligan going this way and that. Low inside, dangerous ball. Came off current. And a very good piece of goalkeeping by Brendan Cummins. Had to be vigilant. Anticipating the unexpected and it came off current. Back there helping out is a recover, Jerry Quinn. Owen Brislane into space. Frank Lowen stumbling, takes it up second time of asking. Good clearance, he's hurling well. Reaching out well for that one. There is Paul Kelly, blocked down. Again, a battling performance from Kennedy. Whoa, that was a frontal charge there by Blunkett, and the referee will have the notebook out. Everybody's incensed by that. John Carroll's in quickly. They're all in. But the referee had identified the culprit straight away as Conor Gleeson has gone down under the weight of a challenge which the referee wasn't one bit happy with. And the shouts of off, off, off you can hear in the background. Referee has uh, called aside Sean McMahon, it seems, the team captain. Now, what is he going to do? He's speaking to him. This is what you can watch here. That's Plunkett. Though that's where it all happened. But it's a red card! And Sean McMahon has been sent off. Yeah, look, Dane, from the minute, like, uh, Adam Maxwell will come over and he seemed to be, you know, had his mind up straight away. If you see it on the replay again, it looks bad enough, but it's going to put this game on a tinder hooks now. I cannot remember Sean McMahon ever being sent off in a championship match. This is what happened, that's how it all started. And this is where it continued after all of that. Well, that was the initial challenge, that was Plunkett. What happened after that is what resulted in the red card. You'll have to keep on looking at this. We may just catch a view of the Clare number six coming in. They were all getting into a pileup. 
on and on and on it went and there it was it was John Carroll I think who went down and there was contact and now there's somebody else down and John, it's getting very nasty yeah. John Carroll has gone out he's been sent off within a minute of the sending off of his man Sean McMahon Carroll has got a red card as well it was hotting up but that wasn't necessary a moment of madness it just got out of hand from the time there was that initial foul involving Plunkett and that everybody got involved in the action first it was McMahon and then the issue wasn't settled it is now they're down to 14 apiece David Kennedy driving it in for Tipperary who still have a lot of work to do but Clare without their captain and the man who shores up the centre of their defence that's a huge loss 213 to 11 points eight between them Tipperary with time still at least 10 minutes to play ball just not coming up for Benny Don Jamesy O'Connor keeping a cool head Colin Lynch flicking it out there to Tony Griffin taken away well and this is the substitute there Eddie Enright for Tipperary back it comes once more David Kennedy reaches up for it but only takes the sting out of it Jamesy Gilligan around the hand pass out to Tony Carmody Carmody striking block down well great blocking that's excellent play well it was a terrific block in there and uh, full credit goes to Tom Costello from Capel White watch this once again one-handed it may have been and there's been a fair amount of one-handed hurling by some of the Tipperary backs it's a day for the hurlies not the fishing rods and it's a free in so is there anything at all that uh, in particular the Tipperary mentors can do because the pressure once again is being exerted by Claire Niall Gilligan Michael Doyle can only watch the state is free is 30 meters out and he strikes it well he's been striking most of them well this afternoon that is his sixth point and that gap of nine between them once again is it now enough Colin Lynch has gone back more into a center half back position Brislane has come to follow him playing as it were on the 40 meanwhile you're watching Brian Quinn getting it out here towards McMahon that's Dermot McMahon up to Andrew Quinn oh slack pass comes back there in the end to Eddie Enright Liam Cahill trying to make some headway stopped stymied Quinn's on the ground Cahill comes back second time of asking Omar is number 10 and again the referee says it may be 15 against 15 but the man in red is required as well time and again to end the stalemate pressure by Brian O'Mara it's been a very clumsy type of second half Claire much the happier they don't care what kind of match this will go down in history as just so long as they get their victory they did their homework in the first half they established an 11 point lead at half time and they haven't allowed Tipperary to eat very much into that Frank Lowen one of the experienced heads in there against him is Owen Kelly coming back to help out inevitably it's Markham against the bandaged Connor Gleeson and finally in the end it needs Tony Griffin to drift way way back into his own half back line a race on here Paul Curran Tipperary's fullback leaving it there and it's Colin Lynch over against Brislane covering an awful lot of ground Brislane winning this duel low inside beyond Kelly this time Tommy Don has gone into the full forward position by the way in the last couple of minutes that's Connor Plunkett out here to Andrew Quinn positions meaning very little once again it's James e. O'Connor sending an angle ball inside for Tony Griffin to end it oh what a stop brilliant save by Brendan Cummins the save of the day and a great chance for Clare to have wrapped it up game set and match they're still leading Tiff have it all to do O'Mara looking at the post steadying himself nobody near him plenty of space they're getting tired and he's got a point 
O'Mara then cracking over his second point of the match, but is it too little? 214 to 12 points, eight points the difference. This was the goal chance. It was Tony Griffin. Well, I think you'd have said that was going to be a goal, but that is one of the great saves of this championship. Without a doubt, Jeremy, you won't see a better one during the year. Holds tip in the game. That went into us completely over. Well, the last time that Clare experienced victory was in a Munster semi-final back in 1999 as Mark O'Leary comes into the action here. Will he be an ace? They need the kind of goals that he can supply. Back it comes towards Paul Kelly, hooked well by the man who wearing number 14, Tony Carmody. Belted ahead to space, Paul Curran back there. Andrew Quinn is the nearest man to him. Two men on their first really big day in the championship, full back and full forward. Tony Griffin has seen it all before. Six points he got last year against Kennedy, and today one point for Griffin. Might have had a goal as well, but for that fantastic save. And that is Jim McMahon, and that's gone over the bar. He was out for a little while with a blood injury, but he's back with a vengeance, with style and wonderful craft. Griffin playing the pass into space. It's a weary-looking Tipperary challenge at this stage. It has not been their day. If they win it, it's the greatest miracle of all time in hurling. Tommy Dunn challenging Davy Fitz, racing away at a goal. Little bit of a block on it as Davy Fitz goes back. Brian Quinn trying to take it out, needing some assistance. Three players from Tipperary alongside him, and Tip get it back. And there's an opportunity. John Carroll was advancing with some menace. But once again, it's Brian O'Mara, rather, was uh, advancing in there, but it's Colin Lynch. One-handed down here. Uh, won't happen quite for Martin Maher in the soppy conditions. Very difficult. Niall Gilligan. Into space towards Andrew Quinn. About th three minutes of normal time to play, plus injury time and stoppage time. Quinn punches the air with delight. Well, he might. He's added to the goal and a point he scored earlier on. It's been a battling performance by Cyril Lyons' charges, and they lead by 216 to 12 points. And there is no fluke whatsoever. Clare have done their homework. Their preparation has been immaculate. They lost the last five games in the league, but they're probably now saying, who cares about that? This was the big one, the 18th of May. They were ready for the challenge. They've been up for it tip have been flat by comparison there'll be two minutes of added time and we still have by my watch here two minutes to go here of the 70s so four to go hardly enough for Tipperary but you never know say your prayers if you come from the Premier County and you'll need to do a lot of that Dermot McMahon James O'Connor can't keep it in got a little push at the last minute anyway and he managed to slide out over in difficult conditions and it's going to be a line ball well Sir Lyons took on the challenge after all the glory years that Clare has had in championship hurling led by Gerald Lachnan our studio guest this afternoon he took on that huge challenge very few would have taken that on he did it he did it bravely and he's done it well line ball for Tipperary Eddie Enright preparing to take it didn't even come up from that time but you can really blame the very very wet heavy awful conditions by the sideline here it's impossible to hit a sideline ball Lynch has done it a few times and done it well but then everything he's touched this afternoon has been touched well Paul Kelly Kelly into space over there Mark O'Leary First chance to get something, but he gets absolutely nothing. Not in tune with the pace of the game at all just yet. So difficult to come in and just try to make an instant impression. Not happening for Mark O'Leary. Playing at top of the left, by the way. We're looking at Clare advancing to the semi-final of the Guinness Monster Championship where they'll play Cork. It all began for them, really. 
back in 1995 in Limerick against Cork. That late sideline ball where Charlie McMahon was injured and Ollie Baker converted the sideline ball for a goal. And at the other end, there's a chance here. And another save by Cummins. Well, once again, Clare are denied. Great opportunity presenting itself. Now Gidigan, I think, was the one who had the opportunity in front of goal, but again, he's denied. Clare won't worry about that at this stage. The hard work has been done as Plunkett plays it into space. Brian Quinn to hit this one. Up to Colin Lynch. It'll be temporary for the qualifiers. In by the back door, whatever door you care to mention. But they will not be monster champions of 2003. But there's a long season ahead yet. Jerry Quinn. So another one of the favourites is going out of the championship. Two in football last Sunday, one in hurling this particular Sunday. Griffin knocks it. It doesn't matter at this stage. The game is in injury time. About a minute and a half to go. 216 to 12 points. Just have a look at this once again. That last save there as Gilligan was advancing. Got enough latitude, but again struck it at the goalkeeper who was very well positioned. And as we were watching that, there's a late, late point. And the late, late point scored by Brian O'Mara. Well, he's getting the credit, although Cyril here, who wasn't watching the replay of that action, thinks it was Owen Kelly. It doesn't really matter. It's 216 to 13 points. A comprehensive win by Clare. The Masters in the first half. A lead of 11 points built on the basis of two goals. Great teamwork. Good preparation, and finishing like that, dashing style like that, commitment from Alan Markham and the rest. Running 40 metres to get possession, even when they're winning and winning handsomely, still prepare to embellish what is already a very healthy position. Colin Lynch, the craftsman in midfield, setting so many good chances up for the likes of Gilligan, this time losing it as it runs away from him and once again they depend on Tom Costello at left corner back for the second half Plunkett one of those who might have been in before the start of the match but for an injury he came in for David Hoey the unlucky one Owen Brislane in along the baseline it comes and that has gone over the bar good stop by the goalkeeper Davy Fitzgerald's first save of the match, it has to be said, and Owen Brislane, the one who gets the credit. Nine between them. It's been like that for so long. It's Clare's day. The Bannermen reign supreme, but it is only the first round of the championship. And before all of that, the umpires have had another little confab, and they've decided that when the ball went over the bar, or whatever, it touched a defender, and it is a 65. Hold the celebrations in Clare. So the follow-up here, David Kennedy touching it in, stopped by uh, Brian Lowen, and the follow-up there by Brian O'Mara, and that has gone over the bar. So the score within the stadium here tells us that it is now 2.17 to 14. Nine between them, the referee is calling for the ball. Tip her out of the Munster Championship. Clare have won a famous victory, beaten over the last four years by the same opposition, but there was no way whatsoever that Cyril Lyons and his team were going to be beaten here in Cork. The sun has come out. Clare have had a great day. They've done well in all areas of the field. They've played with skill and commitment and a very highly rated Tipperary team has been beaten here 